Hey friends, it's Kaylee Bird. Welcome back to my studio. You know I'm always thrilled to have you. So today I have basically the easiest tutorial you'll probably ever see on this channel, if maybe any art channel, and that is how to make a composition grid. Now these are so, so easy to make. This took me probably like 12 minutes to make, but they are so, so valuable, especially for beginning and even intermediate artists. Now I'll go over it a little bit throughout the video, but this is um like i said a composition grid this is what you're going to hold up to whatever you're thinking about painting or drawing before you actually make any marks on your paper and decide the layout of what you're working with and this is going to show you where to put the most interesting pieces of your composition so without further ado if you learn a little something today please think about popping that subscribe button if you do it really helps grow my channel and it makes sure you come back for all the artsy goodness over and over and over again thank you guys happy composing Now, as I specified in the supplies list, you really want to have a wooden picture frame. Now, I got this one from my local thrift store for about $3, but it is very important that you get wood and not that plastic particle crap, whatever, composite material thing that a lot of picture frames are made out of because if you try to hammer tack nails into that it's going to split it's going to break it's just not good you need to find an actual wooden picture frame and the first thing you're going to want to do with that frame is go ahead and take your pliers and take off every little bit of metal or backing and glass all that stuff all that detritus that basically makes it a picture frame you just want it to be an empty wooden frame by the end Next, we are going to have to do a little math. We're going to measure out the grid and figure out exactly where our thirds are. Now, it's important when you start measuring that you use the inner part of the picture frame because you're going to be flipping it over and looking at it from the front. Don't use the outer edge of the picture frame or even the little ledge that's on the inside. You want to use the very inner ledge of what you will actually see as the border from the opposite side. So go ahead and measure that inner edge border and write down the length of it and then divide it by three. I actually wound up having to bust out the good old long division on this and was pretty pleased that I remembered exactly how to do it. Now try to be pretty exact when you're doing this. Go ahead and take your ruler, measuring from the inside like I said, and mark your little spaces. You're going to need two dots on each side, separating each side into thirds. Now it's time to hammer. I highly recommend you use your pliers for this part. You already have them out from the before, and with those little tack nails, if you try holding them, oh my gosh, you are definitely going to hit a finger at least once. Notice how I'm not hammering them down all of the way. You want to make sure to leave between an eighth and a fourth of an inch up. And now for what could be the easiest step in all of art making ever, you're simply going to stretch rubber bands vertically and horizontally over your tacks. And here we go, our super duper easy grid showing you exactly where your most exciting points of action in your artwork should be. Now let's look at this rule of thirds in action. So basically in a nutshell, the rule of thirds is as such. Any strong composition should adhere to the four focal points that are created by using a grid to split any work of art into three by three. Now, the reason is that our eyes as human beings naturally tend to go towards these places in a work of art. I'm not sure exactly why that is, but studies have been shown. 
Now, if you want to create a nice, strong composition, you want to adhere to these four points and make sure that you've got some strong imagery in these areas. This is gonna allow the eye to swim around nicely and create just a slight bit of drama that you wouldn't get if you just tried to square everything up front and center. As you can see with my own work, I've got two places lined up with the body intersecting these focal points, including the absolute brightest part of my figure on that shoulder shine. And I'm sure you will recognize this world famous piece by Japanese artist Hokusai. Look at how amazingly he utilizes the rule of thirds. You can see the bottom two points are almost perfectly lined up with the crests of the waves, and the top has that nice, large, deep blue swath right there on that point. And if this is not dynamic, I don't know what is. Now for real, any rule that is good enough for Vermeer is good enough for me. He utilizes the rule of thirds in a number of his paintings. This is a great example showing the super bright, bright light right there lined up perfectly with those two points of intersection. Vermeer is a master at even making these still, quiet, domestic scenes somehow dynamic in their own way. And speaking of dynamism, if anyone knows how to bring a scene to life, it is Caravaggio. Look at how even in this very quiet scene where you feel like you could almost hear a pin drop, he's utilizing those points of intersection. He's got the brightness of the saint's head matching, of course, the brightness of the skull, but look at where that point of that pen is as well as look at just how the shapes mirror each other and he uses that bottom quadrant to go right up under the table. This is a perfect example of utilizing the space in accordance to thirds. And last but not least, here is one more of mine and you can see even in whatever shape, tall, narrow, short, fat, it doesn't matter. If you utilize those thirds, it's gonna be a dynamic piece. Look at how the corner of the mouth as well as the two corners of the lizard's tail all mirror each other and all hit those perfect third quadrants. I didn't even realize honestly I was doing this so well until I went and double checked afterwards. It's soon enough it becomes second nature. Thank you guys so much for being here today. I really hope you learned something. If you did, think about hitting that subscribe button. See you next time!